I feel so impressed to speak to you regarding the prophet's reward in our offerings. Because it says in Matthew chapter number 10, verse 41, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Jesus promised the prophet's reward. And I can tell you personally, as God brought my life, my ministry, my family together with Kim's ministry and Kim's life and Kim's family. I can tell you that my life would never be the same. Yes, a lot of conflict. Yes, a lot of persecution. Yes, a lot of chaos in the spirit and challenge because when you stand for God, you're going to have a war. But I can tell you this, it's all worth it. It's all so very worth it because I am so much bettered by it. So I want to encourage each and every one of you as we're giving right now, to realize that you're giving into the ministry and the life still of a true prophet, Prophet Kim Clement. That's what this ministry continues to stand for, all that he preached, prophesied, and believed. And as you sow into this platform, you shall reap a prophet's reward. Let me just close with a prayer request and an, and an answer to that prayer. Carolyn wrote in and said, my son Tommy accidentally shot himself. I can't tell you how thankful I would be for prayer warriors standing with me. Since my husband passed away many years ago, I do not have a physical person to stand with me, but I do know that I have you, I have the Lord. Thank you so much. I'm believing for a beautiful recovery, for all the details to be worked out by God. And then she wrote back after we prayed and said, I got to see the powerful hand of God on my son's behalf. Oh, what an amazing God we serve. He turned everything around and the doctors were shocked. He also had a supernatural experience with the Lord himself. And his presence came so powerfully as I was in praise on my way home from seeing my son. Thank you for praying. That was from Carolyn. Carolyn, God bless you. And things happen in this world. They happen in this life. Many times things we cannot control, but God is faithful. What I just want to finish with today and exhorting you regarding is the fact that you are going to have a good finish. You know, there are so many questions in life. Life is sort of strange, isn't it? I'm just talking about naturally speaking until we actually meet God. We understand who he is and his love in our lives. And then we realize our purpose and how God gives direction until all of that happens. And of course, that's an ongoing process, but life can be very, very strange. And people having questions ultimately would, the final question would be, what's going to happen to me when I die? But we also need to know what's going to happen to us as we live, because that's the moments that we have right now to live and to experience him. 
communicate with him and then to obey him and do supernatural works in his name. That's what he's called every single one of us to do. It doesn't matter if you're a stay at home mom or you're an attorney or a doctor or the president of a country, it doesn't matter. We're all called to God's purposes. And what I want to encourage you regarding is the fact that your finish is going to be good. Why? Because right now you're experiencing conflict. Right now you're in a spiritual war. Sometimes we're in a real war physically as well. And we question and we wonder what's going to happen. How are we going to make it? How am I going to fare? You know, it says in Ecclesiastes chapter number eight, verse 12, it says, though a sinner might do a hundred evil things and might live a long time, I know it will be better for those who honor God. Doesn't it amaze you how unfair the playing field is, seemingly? Doesn't it amaze you how unfair life is? Again, I say seemingly because without pr prophetic revelation, we perish. If we just looked at life on its surface, without prophetic revelation and understanding. And we just judged things by what we saw with our naked eye. We would be of all men most miserable. It just doesn't make sense. How someone who can commit purposefully crimes and do evil intentionally with their life, how they can live a long time and it seems not reap the consequences of their evil. God hasn't called me to judge anyone. God hasn't called me to look at the sins of mankind. But what he has called us to do is to share the forgiveness and the loving kindness of God. That's what he wants us. That's what he wants us to. That's how he wants us to respond to humanity and their wickedness and their sinfulness. And he doesn't want us to scratch our heads when we see them continually perpetuating that life and yet seemingly without consequences. He doesn't want us to be jealous. He doesn't want us to be confused because the scripture tells us, I know it will be better for those who honor God. Solomon knew that in God, you have to have a good finish. I'm not a cat person. I don't know too much about cats. I think they're beautiful. I think they're precious. We have dogs. We always have. We've had a cat, but if I'm going to buy something, I'm normally going to buy a dog or bring a dog home. <laughs> but there's one thing that I'm not an expert, but there's one thing I've noticed about cats. They always land on their feet. It's kind of hard to stump a cat. And I'll tell you this, for God's people, the end for God's people has to be good. It's impossible for it not to be.
No matter what we go through in life, no matter what we experience in life, no matter how bad it is, how hard it is, how difficult it is. And we have those times, hopefully not forever in this natural life, hopefully not day in and day out, but sometimes we have problems that stay with us for a very long time. I don't wanna focus on that. What I wanna focus on is encouraging people who are experiencing these kinds of tests and trials, these kinds of discouragements, these kinds of difficulties. And you say, but I love God, but I've read the Bible. I've accepted the Lord into my life and into my heart. I see the truth of scripture. And yet so often when we're up against these things, we have a tendency to think, why me? What's wrong with me? Why am I of all people experiencing this? Why doesn't this sinner who is doing hundreds of evil things continually, why is he living long and why do we see many times the life of the righteous cut short? Well, we can't answer every question in this life perfectly. God will supply all of those answers one day when we're with him face to face. But the key and the, the answer that you and I wanna focus on is the fact that we belong to him and that he has promised us a good end a good finish. It says in Philippians chapter number one, verse number six, God began doing a good work in you and I am sure that, this is the apostle speaking, that he will continue it until it is finished. Can I ask you a question? Are you still alive? <laughs> Are you still breathing? Are you still with us? You know what that means? Then that means that God is at work. Look, Peter was in prison. They had just taken the life of another disciple. And they were so happy about the fact that they were killing off, martyring God's people, that they had Peter and they said, your head will be next. Now here is a guy that Jesus commissioned to feed his sheep. Here is a guy that walked side by side with the Lord, that walked on water with the Lord, that was with Jesus when he was transfigured with Elisha and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. This is a man who had received prophetic insight, understanding and revelation regarding the kingdom of God. So much so that Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, it seemed like all the gates of hell were prevailing against Peter as he was imprisoned. And the next day they would off his head. Do you find yourself asking the question, what's wrong with me? Why me? And we fail in those times to, to, to uh, keep our focus on the fact that we are going to have a good finish. Well, the end of that story is a good finish because we know that the angel of the Lord took and released Peter from that prison by the power of Almighty God, shake, 
shook and rocked the place. Peter was loosed and free to go where the rest of the disciples were behind closed doors, busy praying and interceding for him. And he knocked on that door and he was personified the answer to their prayer. Because God has called you into a particular purpose and into a peculiar place in him. It is impossible for a man to lay his finger upon you and successfully take you out before your time. Because God has ordained for you and for me to have a good finish. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. We're not here to build a kingdom in this world. We're here to obey God with every fiber of our being. And you can walk through this life as Daniel was thrown into the fiery furnace you, or into the lion's den and the Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace. You can know that as long as you have purpose, your life will not be cut short, nor your destiny. And you, in the end, will be like a cat, always landing upon its feet. You will have a good finish. Lord, thank you for touching us now. Thank you for ministering supernaturally to us now regarding your goodness and your good finish that you have planned and predestined for our lives. Let your sovereign plan and let your providence prevail in our lives. It shall as we offer them to you and we do right now Come into our hearts afresh and anew, Lord Jesus. Cause many to be saved and show them their good finish. In your precious name we pray and everyone said, Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you did. We want you to know that we here at the House of Destiny care about your needs, whether it's physical, financial, or spiritual. It's important to us. You can email us at hope at houseofdestiny.org and we would love to pray for you. You are special to God and you are special to us.